packages, baby! Welcome back to yet another episode. Today is another mailbag, and it's one I'm very excited to do because I've been saving up these packages for at least a month. Maybe even going on two months, some of them. So, we're going to jump right in. I've got probably 20 packages here. Probably 25 movies or so. A couple games, I believe, as well. We're going to jump right in, but before we do, I'd love to know what you guys have picked up at the thrift shops, pawn shops, or even on the internet. My mailbags are usually things that I buy on the internet. You know, the thrifting videos are the obvious, obviously I'm buying out in the wild. So I'd love to know what you guys have picked up. Feel free to leave that down in the comments below. As usual, we'll get a little discussion. Riz Olin. And without further ado, we're going to jump right into what looks like an import. Let's see where it came from. London. Very nice. So let's see. What up to all my UK people out there? Let's see what it is. Looks like a Blu-ray. Looks like... Oh yeah, that's right. Forgot I had ordered this. A lot of these I, I, <laughs> I forgot I had ordered. So I ended up buying Thief on Arrow and Criterion. Let me say, okay, I bu bought it on Criterion first. Then realized that it was missing a special features disc on, uh, at, you know, when I bought it on eBay. And I was like, ugh, that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And then my buddy, Mjolnir, what up Mjolnir, let me know that the Arrow release of Thief is even better than the Criterion. I take his word for it, I trust his taste, his opinion. And so I sold off my that single edition, single disc copy of the Criterion Blu-ray of Thief and picked up the Arrow one. This is a Michael Mann film from what, 81? Is that right? 1981. He obviously plays a, a thief. Um, he goes... It's been a while since I've seen it, but bank heists. He has all, all of these bank heists. The film opens up with a really good heist where he's drilling into a safe. And um, it's got tons of mood, tons of atmosphere, as many of the Michael Mann crime films do. James Caan is in this at really the top of his game. This one, I really did enjoy the first time around. It was a solid three and a half for me. But I think on my next viewing, it's going to be even better. Four, four and a half, maybe. So, because I'm really, really... I really want to do a video on Michael Mann's filmography, and I plan to do that soon because I just love how succinct and how uh, diverse his filmography is, and I want to do that. So I picked this up because I need to rewatch Thief. That is Thief from 1981. We've got a weird package here. It's just literally like a piece of cardboard paper. This came from Jacksonville, Florida. Not too far from where I'm at in uh, North Carolina. Well, it is, but you know what I mean. Horus Trap Uncut. I had no idea that there was an uncut version of this out there. It's only a couple minutes longer. Granted, I think like three or four minutes longer. I'm not sure what's even added, but I sold off my cut version, I suppose, the full moon release, and I actually sold it to my friend Danny. What up, Danny? <laughs> and I picked up the uncut version. This is a film I really enjoy. Probably, I would say, the best full moon film by far. And this one came out in 79, so before Charles Band really started pumping them out, this one has a lot of atmosphere, <laughs> really good main character, and what, Chuck Connors, is that his name? He plays the, uh, the owner of this roadside attraction where these young kids, uh, they check it out, and of course, things aren't quite as they seem, but it's really bizarre. There are some things that you won't, you won't really see in any other horror movies, you won't really expect in this. Uh, I'll just say this has a lot of creepy mannequins. So if that's something that really creeps you out, like Uncanny Valley mannequins, <laughs> this is going to do the trick. It has a killer ending. Oh, the ending sticks with you. Just that I, I can't talk about the ending, but it's so good. Taurus Trap, really glad to finally have, I guess, the premiere version of this on Blu-ray. Who knew? I didn't. Taurus Trap. Next up, we have a hefty little package here. This feels like it has three or four movies in it. And I have a feeling I know what this is, but I ordered this like a month and a half, two months ago. Sold off all my DVDs. Hell, I could be wrong about what it is, but let's find out together. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. This is what I ordered from deepdiscount.com. Now, I sold off my... DVD copies of all three of these films and pretty much funded these Blu-rays. I think I came out of pocket like four or five bucks for all three of them. So that's the way we do it. Gang related. This is a Tupac, Shakur, Tupac film with James Belushi. I believe this was Tupac's last movie. Was it this or was it Bullet? 
Not exactly sure, but I was, I'm a big fan of uh, Tupac's acting. I actually, I'm a big hip-hop head, as some of you guys know, but I never really got into Tupac's music. It just didn't quite do it for me. The street poetry, sort of uh, gospel, sort of uh, preach preaching type of uh, rapping that Tupac used to do. And um, a street preacher, really, was what he was. And he has his place in music, of course. I like his music. I just never really fell in love with it. Biggie was more <laughs> my kind of guy. Gangster rap, really. Uh, Tupac got into gangster rap. Don't get me wrong. But uh, Biggie existed in gangster rap. And that was more my, my flavor. Big pun. Things like that. L. Anyway, gang-related. Tupac, Jim Belushi, Layla Rashawn, James Earl Jones, Dennis Quaid. This is a inner-city crime film from 97. And it's supposed to be really good, really gritty. And I love these types of urban crime films. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out. From what I understand, uh, James Belushi and Tupac play corrupt cops. So that interests me right off the bat. So definitely got to check out Gang Related. Have you guys seen this one? What do you think about it? Let me know. Next up, we got Kinjite. I believe it's a Japanese word. Kinjite, we'll say. Forbidden Secrets. This is um, Char Chuck Bronson, J. Lee Thompson film. And uh, 80, 1989, so one of the last ones they did, maybe even the last one they did together. I'm not sure if they did one in the 90s before J. Lee Thompson passed. Either way, uh, oh, by the way, these are all Olive film releases. There was a little Olive Films uh, sale that I took advantage of. And uh, yeah, so Kinjite, I know nothing about this, guys, but it's Chuck Bronson and L.J. Thompson, or J. Lee? Is it J. Lee? L.J. J. Lee Thompson. And um, I'm trying to collect their movies because I really want to hunker down and watch some Chuck J. Lee Thompson movies. Anyway, that is Kinjite. Next up, we got a film, a prison film, Birdman of Alcatraz. I know this one is going to really touch me and really resonate with me just based on the plot alone uh, about a man who, uh, is, yeah, I'm just kind of reading it to refresh my memory, uh, sentenced to Alcatraz for murder, and he becomes an ornithologist in jail. Uh, he studies birds in jail. I think this is based on a true story to a real person who found his passion, found his calling, found his purpose in birds, in ornithology and science, and I think that's beautiful as somebody who's into that kind of thing too. Uh, I can't wait to check this out. Burt Lancaster, one of his more well-known films. This is uh, music by Elmer Bernstein. Very nice. That is, you guys would know him from um, uh, Ghostbusters. I, I believe he did Ghostbusters. We've got, this is also directed by John Frankenheimer, which is a big reason why I want to check this out. I love Frankenheimer's work, especially Seconds from the 60s. Um, you know, he's he spanned through the 60s to the 2000s with, rain, to, you know, with Reindeer Games in 01. Uh, French Connection 2, The Train, The Prophecy, Ronin, so many great films John Frankenheimer has done. And Birdman of Alcatraz is supposed to be one of his best, so I'm looking forward to checking that out. All right, guys, moving along, moving along. What do we got here? What do we got? Coming from Omicron Court, Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Kentucky. Let's see what we've got. Oh, yeah. Wow, I completely forgot. Was this from... Oh, yeah. Okay, that's weird. Deep discount. Uh, packaged these together. I thought there was a fourth one that was missing from there. But, yeah, so special effects. I had two copies of this, sold them both off. Not for much, but I pretty much covered this DVD or Blu-ray. I think it came out of pocket a couple bucks. Special feature, uh, special effects is a Larry Cohen film written and directed by big fan of Larry Cohen. The stuff is one of my favorite, <laughs> favorite movies I would say of all time. Definitely from the eighties in terms of horror, Larry Cohen, uh, Cohen, cue the winged serpent. God told me to some absolute genre classics came from the New York director, Larry Cohen. I love his style. I love how New York his films are growing up in the metropolitan area in Stanford, Connecticut, visiting Connecticut all, or New York all the time. I really love movies that take place in the city. So I would assume that special effects follows suit. All Pretty much all of Larry Cohen's movies take place in the city. So that is really cool. Special effects. It's supposed to be sort of a thriller not really a horror film but it has a heavy emphasis on special effects it sort of reminds me the plot at least reminds me of fx and fx2 with um brian brian brown <laughs> brian brown and uh dennehy damn I'm blanking on names brian dennehy is that his name anyway special effects looking forward to checking that out next up we have one from something special llc giving shout outs Oh, yeah, this came from overseas, I believe. Mortal Kombat Co Conquest. I believe I now own everything Mortal Kombat in terms of cartoon, live action, TV show, all that kind of stuff. This is the complete series of Mortal Kombat Conquest. Now, you guys are probably like, what the hell is that? Well, this was a, a Canadian show. 
that came out in the mid 90s or late 90s. Yep, late 90s after actually both movies it seems or around the time that the Mortal Kombat Armageddon came out. And uh, yeah, this looks really good. It's supposed to be good. Look at the back. I mean, there's some cool screenshots there. It's supposed to have all the characters. And uh, hey, that looks like at least Liu Kang on the front. Like the new movie drives me crazy. I could... The new movie wasn't, wasn't bad, but that main character just spoils almost the entire film for me. He is so vanilla and milk toast and boring. Just go with Liu Kang or Johnny Cage, for Christ's sake. You don't need to create a new character for a franchise that has hundreds of characters. Anyway, it's a video in and of itself. Mortal Kombat Conquest. I look forward to checking this out. It's going to be a lot of fun. 970 minutes, so it was a pretty pretty long TV series. I, I, probably 12 episodes or something. But uh, a lot of time, so that'll be fun. And here we have another import. Let's see where it's coming from. It looks like it's coming from Germany. Awesome. I'm ordering things from all over the world, man. I don't play. That's what. Ha those, that's the luxury of having a uh, an all-region player, man. you got to have one as a collector. Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know this was um, PAL Region B. Maybe I did. I, I'll have to double-check. Either way, Young Guns 2, I sold off both of my DVDs that were actually fetching like 10 bucks each. I think I made like $8 profit on each of them when all was said and done. Something like that. Young Guns 2 got this from overseas. I didn't know it was a Region B, but that's okay. I mean, as long as the transfer is okay and everything like that. Um, yeah, I'll have to look into that and see if I ordered the wrong thing or if I... I don't know. I'll have to look into it. I'm sure it's fine, though. Young Guns, by the way, I love the original, but I've never seen the sequel. And it has a lot of great people. Emilio Estevez, Kiefer Sutherland, Lou Diamond, Phillips, LDP, Christian Slater, William Peterson. I mean... The cast is amazing. Music by Alan Silvestri. Songs by John Bon Jovi. Jeff Murphy directed 1990. This is going to be a fun movie. All right, we've got Vinegar Syndrome Returns. <laughs> that gives you a hint. There's a really good seller. I believe, I'm not sure if he works for Vinegar Syndrome or something, but I think some of the excess Vinegar Syndrome things end up on this guy's eBay. And I got this for like 22 bucks, and I sold my DVD, so this ended up coming to only a few dollars. Cool. He's threw in a, he or she, they threw in a little, that's a pretty badass sticker. Look at that. Vinegar Syndrome. Give it a second to focus. It's kind of refractive too. That's pretty neat. That'll go somewhere. James Hong in The Vineyard. This is a film that admittedly I wasn't too crazy about the first time I watched it, you know, via torrents back in my late teens. But it's been a long time. Obviously I'm 33 now. I'm sure I will get some enjoyment out of this and honestly it was only a few bucks to upgrade to the blu-ray so i figured why not you know less than five bucks to get a blu-ray of the vineyard after all is said and done i am all for it so i'll have to give this a, a shot and i love vinegar syndrome's work they always have great special features etc so uh looking forward to checking this out it was actually directed and partially written and the screenplay was partially written by james hong so this is really a james hong picture he stars in it as the the antagonist um, he wrote the story, wrote, helped on the script, d helped direct it. So this is, this is a really interesting piece here. And it, it, as far as I can remember, he, it, obviously he's on a vineyard where he's trying to, I believe he's trying to find the fountain of youth through, I, I it's been too long guys. I, I got to rewatch it clearly, but I'm going to keep this to the side there. Next up, next up, Amazon fulfillment. So this is coming from Amazon. Life ain't nothing but a fat rat race. But, 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 I forgot this got a release. <laughs> this was one I came out of pocket for. The DVD wasn't uh, fetching much. I love this movie. I'm very nostalgic for this movie. I saw it in theaters twice. Once with my father, once with my buddies. Came out when I was around 13. So it was the right age. Such a fun. This is my, you know, mad, 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 mad world. This is my cannonball run. My, the, the great race, you know. <laughs> this is, this is that type of film. Where in the beginning, a millionaire is like, there's a whole bunch of money somewhere, and you gotta race to get it. And he selects a, a bunch of people, and it's just a crazy rat race to find this money. And, of course, there are twists and turns as it goes along. Incredible cast. Rowan Atkinson, John Cleese, Whoopi Goldberg, Cuba Gooding Jr., Seth Green, John Lovitz, Breck and Meyer, Amy Smart. All of them are great. All of them are fun. Great chemistry. Uh, they're all, all the characters are balanced really well, and some are really funny. Uh, Jerry Zucker, from, you know, the Zucker Brothers fame 
who did, who helped work on movies like Airplane, if I'm not mistaken, and Hot Shots and all those, uh, directed this, Jerry Zucker, one of the Zuckers. So, Rat Race, so glad to finally have this on Blu-ray. I was, I was, I was beckoning for a Blu-ray for years and years for Rat Race, and I'm glad it finally got one from uh, Paramount. So, that is awesome. And it's not an on-demand one or anything, it's a legitimate release. So, uh, here we have, from Declutter, this is a package from Georgia, Georgia! Bought a lot of stuff from Declutter over the years. Oh my god, I forgot I ordered this. This is like months ago. Oh, I'll show you in a second. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. <laughs> Between Rat Race and this, two of my favorite movies. Well, this is one of my favorite movies of all time. Rat Race is just one of the funnest, most nostalgic movies for me. The Thing from Another World. Oh man, I always forget the date. 51, is it? 51 RKO Pictures, directed by Christian Nyby. This is a Howard Hawks produced film. And it's an archive collection, and I don't know if you guys have heard, but I've briefly talked about um, Warner, I believe, is discontinuing at least their archive collection, possibly all physical media. So um, these are going to start to go up in price. I, I guarantee it. I pretty much guarantee it. I, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty confident these are going to get really hard to find, especially things like this that are beloved classics. I love this film. Uh, not as much as the, the remake, of course. The remake is... One of my favorite films of all time, top two, top three, you know, with Blade Runner and The Matrix and The Thing and uh, Die Hard. They, they always are switching, Nausicaa. But this, this is in my top hundred films of all time. I absolutely love this. This is one of the most rousing, has one of the most rousing scenes in any 50s movie. Any movie made before 1970, even, um, in, in the, the siege scene, where uh, the siege, yeah, sort of a siege, where the uh, creature is busting through the door and they start flame throwing or th flame throwing him. It's incredible. It's not really a siege. It's just sort of him rushing in and them being prepared to try to take him out. It's such an incredible scene. Great chemistry between the cast. Love this movie. Love it, but not as much as the 82 classic, of course. And next up, we've got one from Mail Handling International. So this is an international package, and I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. Let's see. Hampshire. So I believe that's England. Let's see what it, what it is. Oh my god, yes. Again, I keep, I've forgotten about so many of these. I sold off my DVDs months ago and upgraded to the Region B. Uh, yes, the PAL version of I Know What You Did Last Summer, 88 films. I actually don't think this got... This is 88 films. They don't do many things in Region A, so I think this is the only way you could get it. I'm not positive, though, but I know it's going to be... A, they're going to be great transfers. This has the entire trilogy. Um, I know what you did last summer. I still know, and I'll always know what you did last summer. Such ridiculous titling, uh, gradual titling there. But this is really cool as a slip cover. Seems a little loose, but I think it's just the uh, the things that hold the discs. Jim Gillespie directed the first one. I love the first movie. I've actually never seen the sequels, but I'm a big fan. Super nostalgic for I know what you did last summer, and I think it holds up really well as a you know one of the the slasher resurgence movies. I think it. Um, and Scream, I Know What You Did Last Summer, and Scream are two of the best slasher resurgent movies. I Know What You Did Last Summer is more straightforward in terms of slasher and more homage than Scream. Obviously, Scream is a deconstruction and sort of a parody. This is more of an homage, and it really has great set pieces that remind me of Dario Argento in a lot of ways. They, the way the set... Um, the way the sets look, the way the camera moves through them, the way it sets up the kills. So Gillespie did a really good job, and I, I would bet he's a fan of Dario Argento's giallos and slasher flicks. So I know what you did last summer. Awesome movie. So glad to have the trilogy, which was pretty much paid for. I had uh, the trilogy on DVD, and then I had I Know What You Did Last Summer and its sequel on Blu-ray, all of which were out of print and fetched quite a bit. I maybe even made money on that one. Next up, this one is from Overseas 2. Oh, wow, this took months to get to me. Mythica, complete five film collection. So um, I, I had watched the first Mythica years ago and I was like, this is not a bad movie. This is sort of like in the vein of Hercules and Xena from the 90s. And obviously I'm nostalgic for that. I grew up during that time. And these were really fun, sort of like Lord of the Rings light or like Dungeons and Dragons in like a low budget fantasy form. Now I say low budget, but they look really good. They're really well done. And uh, my, Kevin Sorbo, actually, Hercules himself, was actually in some of the movies, uh, definitely the first one, if I remember correctly. But this has five films on it, the entire Mythica collection. So yeah, I'm really excited to uh, dig into these and check them out. I think they're going to be some fun, high fantasy films. I like a good low budget fantasy film. Looking forward to digging into Mythica. And the first one was a lot of fun. I was surprised by it. So next up, we've got from Right Stuff. Ooh, buddy. 
that'll give you an idea. And I think I know what this is, and I'm about to weep. <laughs> I'm about to weep. Oh my god. Finally. Finally. So, um, for years, um, I've been watching Happy Console Gamer. He, he's a... Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers. I've been watching him since since 08, and him and I just had a lot of things in common despite our, our age difference, and um, anime was one of those things. So he actually put me on to a film called Arion, and uh, Arion didn't have even a DVD release in this country, maybe a VHS release. I'm not exactly sure. I doubt it. No DVD, only Blu-ray. Or, I'm sorry, no DVD, no Blu-ray. <laughs> finally, finally, Right Stuff got the rights to release Arion this is the collector's edition. Oh, I'm so excited. Has special features, the making of. It's a two hour long film that's partially directed by one of my favorite anime directors. He, he well, at least did one of my favorite anime films, Venus Wars, Yoshikazu, Yoshikazu Yasuiko. Uh, v, he directed Venus Wars and he also helped co-direct this and it's based on an original work by Yasuhiko, Yas, um, Yoshikazu Yasuiko. He did the character design, animation direction, this is really his, his brainchild. This is his baby. The script was by Akiko Tanaka and Yoshikazu Yasuiko. The music, guys, is by Joe Hisaishi. Uh, guys, I, I know I am going to just absolutely fall in love with this one. I know it. It's based on Greek mythology, so it's Japan's take on Greek mythology. Uh, the film. When did the film actually come out? It doesn't have a year on it. It's definitely from the 80s. Uh, Yoshi, uh, Yoshikazu Yasuiko also did Crusher Joe the movie. Guys, I'm so thrilled to own this. I'm so grateful to own this in the collection, and I can't wait to sit down and, and watch it. I think it's going to become one of my favorites. I know I'm overhyping it, but I don't know. I just have a feeling. Um, old school anime is one of those things that just uh, really resonates with me. So, moving on. All right, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We got like five more to go. Ooh, this one's going to be difficult to open or not. Never mind. <laughs> this is from. Coming from Georgia. Georgia! Another one from Georgia. Georgians got some good movie taste, I tell you. What up, my Georgians? <laughs> this one is The River. This is another keen. This is a Kino release, actually. The River. I had two copies on DVD that I got for a buck each, so I sold them off for, I think, like $8 profit each. Picked up the Blu ray. A couple bucks. No problem. Mel Gibson film. Mark Rydell directed, I know nothing about this movie, 1984. I think it's sort of a disaster film where a river um, runs loose or like a dam breaks or something and it overflows the city. I'm not exactly sure, but that's what it looks like to me. Sissy Spacek, Mel Gibson, Scott Glenn. Mel Gibson in like a sort of a disaster film. Hell yeah, buddy. Another one from overseas from Hampshire. Another one from Hampshire. Probably the same seller. We've got River's Edge, PAL version. Region B of River's Edge. I could have got the, the Region A one, but it was like 80 bucks. So I was like, nah, 15 bucks will do Region B. It's an MGM release, Hollywood classic, Signal One Entertainment, tons of brands all over this thing. You know how how they do in, in Region B. Plastering stuff all over. And uh, yeah, I've never seen River's Edge, but it's supposed to be sort of a loss of innocence, um, youth, kind, uh, youth in revolt sort of film where one of the characters accidentally kills someone and they try to cover it up. I believe that's the story, if I'm not mistaken. But it's Keanu Reeves, man. So I got to check it out. Crispin Glover, uh, just uh, um, Dennis Hopper as Feck. <laughs> 1986. So this is really early Keanu Reeves before Bill and Ted. Can't wait to check this out. It's going to be a, a heavy one, though. Moving on, we've got another Amazon package. Hooey! Another archive of Judgment Night, a really underrated Stephen Hopkins film from 93, I want to say? 93, Stephen Hopkins, such an underrated film about a group of friends who find themselves in the wrong part of town, witness a murder, and then are tr tracked down, chased throughout the entire movie by cr a crazed Dennis Leary, who is trying to eradicate them from the planet so that they don't you know, they have pertinent information. They saw the murder happen. So they're on the run through the city, th through the dark, seedy streets. It takes place over a night, Judgment Night. And it just has this really great atmosphere of like an inner city at night in these little corners of the city that nobody seems to go. Just desolation, you know. So really cool movie. I have goosebumps thinking about the movie's, uh, the movie's atmosphere. Emilio Estevez again. Cuba Gooding Jr. again. Dennis Leary. Awesome, awesome movie. And I love that poster. That must be the original poster from 93, because I do like it quite a bit. All right, I'll save a movie, what I think is a movie for last. And 
we have a limited run package. I know what this is, and I'm very excited about it. I recently splurged. About once every couple months or so, I buy a Switch game, usually in the retro st modern retro style so modern games that are done in a retro style those are what i really gravitate towards i play a lot of modern games too don't get me wrong i'm playing ghost of tsushima right now which is amazing but these are really my cup of tea as somebody who grew up with the nintendo in the 90s sega all that kind of stuff and um i love metroidvania games i love roguelikes dead cells binding of isaac you know bloodstain things like that and this seems sort of to be something kind of unique actually don't know really how to how to categorize it but this is an incredible release oh my god guys i got this for like 20 dollars, brand new in this beautiful limited run package i am so thrilled in this episode holy shit um i gotta yeah it's like bulging a little bit but i gotta i gotta figure it out let's see what's in here so we've got the uh here we go the ps4 version of downfall here or downwell sorry downwell so this is game from what it looks like again i don't know much oh we got a little booklet in here oh nice oh wow oh this is like really well made look at this guys yeah not full color but really stylized color in the, in the same style that the game is really neat yeah this is um this is a game that looks really cool you start at the top of a well you jump in and you work your way to the bottom and that it, it seems sort of metroid-ish but it's very confined to a cylinder it looks really interesting and platformy and, and fun and just looks like my kind of thing, man. So I really was excited to pick this up on the PS4 for really not much at all. And um, I'm really happy to have this beautiful special edition that will be added to the collection, or has been added to the collection. Anywho, last but not least, maybe least, as I always say, the Time Machine, probably not least, the Time Machine. From 1960, I want to say, is the original 60. Yep, George Pal directed. Really good film. I like this one and the, the remake with Guy Pearce quite a bit. I like them really on an even keel. I've not read the original H.G. Wells story. I plan to change that at some point, but I do love these movies. Who starred in this? I always forget. Rod Taylor. Rod Taylor, who was in, what, um, Beneath, Beneath the Planet of the Apes, I believe? He replaced Charlton Heston. Um, anyway, this is uh, the time machine, guys. You know the story. A guy creates a time machine and ends up like millions of years in the future where these troglodyte creatures have overrun the planet and there's some sinister stuff going on and really cool movie, The Time Machine. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I'm running low on battery, so I'm gonna do this really quick. I'd love to know what you've picked up recently. Feel free to leave that down in the comments below. We'll get a little discussion rolling. I have a Patreon and t-shirts. Links, links are in the description below. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you wanna see more videos like it, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, as well as the little bell for notifications. Anyway, guys, I will see you all next time. Board Cyborg is gonna roll out of frame as usual. See ya.